All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Sanjay Mattu. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says fundamentals of Indian economy are strong and it has capacity to bounce back. Census India 2021 to begin on 1st of April this year to be conducted through a mobile app. India poised for exponential growth in aviation sector, says Union Minister Hardeep Puri. Third, Kelo India Games to begin today at Gubahati in Assam. And in cricket, the third and final T20 international between India and Sri Lanka to be played in Pune this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the fundamentals of the Indian economy are strong and it has the capacity to bounce back. Addressing a meeting of economists and industry leaders at Niti Aayog, Mr. Modi said sectors like tourism, urban development, infrastructure and agro-based industry have a great potential of taking forward the economy and for generating employment. He called for a focused effort from all stakeholders in order to achieve the target of a $5 trillion economy. Stating that India is a land with unlimited possibilities, the Prime Minister requested all stakeholders to do their bit to bridge the gap between reality and perception. Mr. Modi said everyone must work together and start to think like a nation. In a tweet, Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Rajiv Kumar said the meeting discussed a wide range of issues relating to economic growth, startups and innovation. Enumerators of the census will seek information about the mobile number of the head of the family, information related to toilets, TV, Internet, vehicles owned, source of drinking water, besides asking other questions during the house listing phase of the exercise. It will begin on the 1st of April this year and will end on the 30th of September. Census India 2021 will be conducted through a mobile phone application, moving away from the traditional pen and paper. Our correspondent has more details. In a notification, the Registrar General and Census Commissioner said, Census officers have been directed to ask as many as 31 questions to collect information from every household during the house listing and housing census exercise. The notification, however, made it clear that mobile number will be sought only for census-related communications and not for any other purpose. The other information that will be sought from every household includes whether the family owns a telephone, mobile phone, smartphone, bicycle, scooter, motorcycle, moped, car or jeep or van, radio or transistor, laptop or computer. Questions related to main source of lighting, whether the family has access to a toilet, wastewater outlet, availability of kitchen and LPG or PNG connection and main fuel used for cooking will also be asked by the enumerators. Unpermish, AI News Delhi. The BJP has expressed confidence that a pro-people union budget will be presented next month, as Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman held pre-budget consultations with party functionaries. She held four rounds of meetings with BJP leaders at the party headquarters in New Delhi yesterday, taking feedback for the budget. The first budget in the second term of the Narendra Modi government will be presented on the 1st of February. The BJP has refuted the allegation levelled by the Congress that the violence in JNU was sponsored by the government, saying it is totally baseless. Briefing media persons in New Delhi, senior BJP leader and Union Minister Prakash Javlikar said the student union belonging to the left and the Congress opposed the registration process and destroyed the server. Mr Javlikar said the police investigation will unmask those masked people who had unleashed violence in the campus. Secretary Department of Higher Education, Amit Khare, met a JNU delegation in New Delhi yesterday to resolve outstanding issues. The delegation comprised members of the JNU Teachers Association, led by Professor D.K. Lobial, and JNU Students' Union President Aishi Ghosh. Mr. Khare has invited the students again for further discussions this afternoon. The Jammu and Kashmir Administrative Council, which met under the chairmanship of Lieutenant Governor G.C. Murmu, has accorded sanction to the Jammu and Kashmir Special Sugar Scheme for the Antyode Anna Yojana, or AAY, families. Over 2.33 lakh families in the Union Territory will receive benefit of the scheme. The families classified as AAY comprise the poorest of the poor sections of society. The Jammu and Kashmir Tourism Department has launched a massive publicity campaign at the ongoing South Asian Trade and Travel Exchange Expo, or SATTE 2020, 
to showcase the diverse tourist attractions of the twin regions. The three-day expo, sponsored by the JNK Tourism Department and supported by the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, has been organized in New Delhi. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Puri has said that India is poised for an exponential growth in the aviation sector. Speaking at the Curtain Razor event for Wings India 2020 in New Delhi, Mr. Puri said there will be a structured privatization as well. Wings India 2020 is an international exhibition and conference on the civil aviation sector slated to be held at Begumpet Airport, Hyderabad, from March 12 to 15 this year. The minister said all airports in the country are going to be expanded and modernized. The Indian skies are in for very, very challenging times. I think we have a digital platform almost ready, which will ensure that a drone takes off with coordinates already programmed, and that as long as it sticks to that flying path, it's all right. If it transgresses, then it will have to come back to the base. But this requires work on the technological front, and a lot of it has been done. The Airports Authority of India, or AAI, Regional Director Sanjeev Jindal has announced that transgender persons will be given the chance to serve AAI in the northeastern region by the next three months. While addressing an awareness program organized by the AAI at Maharaja Bir Bikram Airport, Agatala, he said in order to bring equality for all citizens, AAI has come up with Project Equality at the MBB Airport. The Reserve Bank of India has amended KYC or Know Your Client or Know Your Customer norms allowing banks and other lending institutions regulated by it to use video-based customer identification process or VCIP. The move will help them onboard customers remotely. The VCIP, which will be consent-based, will make it easier for banks and other regulated entities to adhere to the RBI's Know Your Customer norms by leveraging the digital technology. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu is arriving on a two-day visit to Trichy and Tanjavur in Tamil Nadu today. He'll be attending a host of programs, including the inauguration of the world-renowned St. Tyagaraja Aradhana Music Festival at Tiruvayaru tomorrow. The third edition of the Prime Minister's Interaction with School Students, Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020, will be held at Talkatora Stadium in New Delhi on the 20th of this month. Over 2,000 students, parents and teachers will be participating from all over India in this event. In his Monkey Bar program on AIR, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had said that students, parents and teachers should participate in the process of exams without any fear and tension. We have to make a difference between all of us. My friends, when they are in the same time, they are in the same time, parents are in the same time, teachers are in the same time. In this country, in the last few years, हम मन की बात के माध्यम से परीक्षा पर चर्चा टाउन हॉल के माध्यम से या फिर एग्जाम वॉरियर बुक के माध्यम से लगातार प्रयास कर रहे हैं The themes given this time for PPC 2020 are Gratitude is great. Your future depends on your aspirations. Examining exams. Our duties, your take. And balance is beneficial. The entries for the short essay competition were invited online from 2nd to 23rd December 2019. Students were also invited to send their questions online. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will answer the questions and interact with selected students where he will discuss how to beat exam stress. PPC 2020 will have the town hall format wherein the Prime Minister interacts with school students at the Talkatora Stadium, New Delhi. The first edition of Pariksha Pe Charcha was held on 16th of February 2018 and second was on 29th of January 2019. Tanvi Khurana, AIR News, Delhi. Students from all over the country from class 6 to 12 are requested to see the broadcast on Doordarshan, that is DD National, DD News and DD India. They can also listen to the Prime Minister on All India Radio Medium Wave and All India Radio FM channels. The Indian Consulate in Dubai will issue passports under the Tatkal scheme on the same day with certain conditions. The announcement was made by Consul General Vipul on the occasion of the Pravasi Bharati Diva celebrations yesterday. The Consul General was addressing Indian expats who had gathered in large numbers on the occasion. However, he said that the application for the passport had to be made before noon and additional fees would be charged for the service. 
the passport would be given to the applicant by the evening. Passports under the Tatkal scheme, in any case, were being given within 24 hours. A report. Amidst cheers from the Indian diaspora, the Indian consulate said that under the Tatkal scheme, they will deliver the passport on the same day. This will facilitate the Indian expat community if they have to undertake a travel in any emergency situation. Hundreds of expats had gathered at the Indian consulate in Dubai to celebrate the Pravasi Bharti Divas, where they also watched the live telecast of the address of the External Affairs Minister, S. Jai Shankar. Kanchan Prasad, AIR News, Dubai. The U.S. House of Representatives has approved a symbolic resolution seeking to limit President Donald Trump's ability to wage war on Iran. The measure passed the Democratic-run chamber 224 to 194, but faces an uphill task in the Republican-held Senate. It aims to mandate congressional approval for any conflict with Iran, except in cases of an imminent attack against the U.S. Speaking to reporters about the resolution, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said Trump must de-escalate and must prevent further violence. The stage has been set for the grand inauguration of the third Kelo India Youth Games at Guwahati in Assam today. Chief Executive Officer of the Games, Avinash Joshi, said all preparations have been made for the inaugural ceremony. Guwahati, Assam and the country is going to witness one of the best opening ceremonies for the Games. So everything is tied up. We have received around 2,300 participants. Almost 4,000 participants will be there. And at the peak, like total if we see 6,456 athletes, 3,500 support staff and 1,500 volunteers. So we are going to have almost 11,500 people participating in the event. Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonowal, Union Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju and several star players would grace the opening ceremony. A report. The third edition of the Kelo India Youth Games has emphasis on elimination of single-use plastic. It would be the biggest sports event in the country. Maharashtra and Assam have sent the largest contingent. The organizer is to showcase a very attractive cultural event in the opening ceremony at Sorusaja Stadium. Assam's rich culture, heritage, art, as well as India's diversity and ethnicity will be displayed in the inaugural ceremony. With Sashank, Manasputim Sharma, AR News, Guwahati. In In cricket, the third and final T20 international match between India and Sri Lanka will be played today at the Maharashtra Cricket Association Stadium in Pune. The match will start at 7 p.m. All India Radio will broadcast a live commentary on the match, alternately in Hindi and English. It can be heard on the FM Rainbow and additional frequencies from 6.30 p.m. And now for a look at today's newspapers for the stories, it's over to Subhadra Ramachandran. Thank you, Sanjay. The visit of 15 foreign envoys to Jammu and Kashmir gets top billing in the press. Reporting on the visit, the Hindu writes, foreign envoys in JNK on a fa fact-finding visit. They met politicians, editors and elected grassroots leaders. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's pre-budget interaction with economists and business leaders is prominently noticed by the press. The business standard quotes Mr. Modi are saying, fundamentals are strong, economy will rebound. The Hindu in a story caption, S.C. Rebaf's plea to implement CAA, quotes Chief Justice S.A. Bobre as saying, court must independently review the law for elements of unconstitutionality. On the recently released national crime data, the Times of India reports, crime rate fell, registrations rose in 2018, shows NCRB data, but the year saw a rise in crimes against women. And finally, in the backdrop of growing incidents of online trolling and abuse, the Financial Express reports, Twitter to experimenting with limiting replies. And with that, it's back to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Subhadra. That was a look at today's newspapers for the major stories. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says, fundamentals of Indian economy are strong and it has capacity to bounce back. Census India 2021 to begin on 1st of April this year to be conducted through a mobile app. India poised for exponential growth in aviation sector, says Union Minister Hardeep Puri. Third, Kilo India Games to begin today at Guwahati in Assam. And in cricket, the third and final T20 international between India and Sri Lanka to be played in Pune this evening. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day. <laughs>